Okay, today's daily rehab session is about adductor strengthening. So AD, ductor, as in your groin muscles and tendon strengthening following injury, and especially for some of our clients who are soccer players who are getting groin problems. And I'm even seeing this in the younger soccer players, so even under 12s, who are getting little groin and hip flexor strains from a lack of strength and overuse. So I'm gonna go through some strengthening work and some exercises you might not have seen before, starting off with the acute phase, strength and tendon up to the strengthening sort of harder advanced phase. So like a progression of exercises, if you like. So the first thing we start people off on is isometrics because groin tendons and muscles tend to take a little while to get right. And we need to get onto these things early to stop the sort of weakening setting in. But these exercises are always done in conjunction with glute exercise, okay? So we're not just doing inductive stuff by itself, we're doing glute work as well, which I'm not showing you today, but I'm just showing you just the groin, the adductor work. Just note that this stuff is always done with glute and single leg work when you can to make sure there's a balance there because a lot of these things, there's an imbalance. Sometimes these are working too hard because they don't have any glutes or maybe they're too tight or maybe they're too weak. So first one is we work on isometric adduction, and the easiest way of doing this is ball against a wall. So I've got against a pole, you can just do it against the wall, and you all only need like a soft ball like this, you could even use a pillow, you could even just push your knee into the wall. This just makes it a little bit more comfortable for the inside of your knee, plus you've got a resistance to push against. So I can set myself up where I'm parallel, all right, Left, this leg is not sort of out on angle, it's parallel. And then what I wanna try and aim for is to push that knee into the ball so I can feel it in here. Now when you're in acute sort of phase, like that, in the acute phase, you just gotta be careful not to push too hard and try and strain it, right? You just need to push this enough until you just feel that muscle turn on, but no pain, all right? These ones last for about 30 seconds, maybe acute, they're 10 seconds, but you're building up to a minute endurance to try and get that muscle switching on and holding, acting like a stabilizer, okay? Now the harder you push, you might have to push in, bring your foot in, see I've put my foot in there, and then push in, so when I push in, I'm still in that nice plane in there, and I can really feel that working now. So these ones just get harder and harder and harder, depending on how hard you push there. It's a great exercise to do. If that's too much, some people they can't get in this position, maybe they're a bit too acute, maybe it's sort of day four and they're really not up to this sort of phase. Then you work on simple things like ball squeezes. We don't use this often, but when the real acute people come in, we do, especially the pubic symphysis people, is you just place that ball in there and then it's just a very slight push in with both, okay? So that one's resisting the other and it's very slightly. You've got to be very careful with pubic symphysis people not to push too hard on this because it can cause some irritation, but that would be if I'm starting some off very, very light. Otherwise, it's up against the wall, okay? Now, of course, you can use heavier balls, that sort of thing to make it harder, but that's where I'd start. Going from there, before we get to like a Copenhagen, which is on your side, which is quite advanced, there's an interim step we do, which is concentric work. So we go from sort of an isometric to a standing concentric, which is a little more functional, and then we go back to a harder isometric, because the jump from that to a Copenhagen is quite a lot. We want to have a little bit more time, a little bit more strengthening, plus you probably spend a bit more time doing your glute work to balance that out before you, and a bit more healing before you hit some harder stuff. So what I get people to do is work on banded hip adduction. Now it's pretty hard to do the eccentric component for this. So we generally focus on the isometric and the concentric work because just mechanically it's hard to do eccentric, especially at home. So for this one, if I'm doing my left, I'm gonna have that band out to my left on my left, all right? Sometimes handy have a pole or a door frame, something to hold on to. Stand on that right foot. So when you're at this point here, you've got the load on already. And when you let that go out into a deduction, all right, which is eccentric work on the a deduction, there still should be some tension there. So it's almost holding my foot up. I've just got to correct myself, keep myself upright, and then pull that in to meet the other foot. Then I can choose to do an isometric work there or not and I would go slowly on the way out. So at least you're doing a slow eccentric, out, and then pulling in. Now of course, that band needs to be enough for strengthening, 
but not so much that I feel it every time I pull in. So if I'm doing this and I'm going, oh, ow, that band is too heavy. All right? You can't afford to make this sore, especially when you're in an acute phase. So working on your concentric and eccentric work there, slow, repetitions, 10 to 12, maybe up to 15, two or three sets, maybe four, depending on that level of conditioning. That's the one I'd work on as an interim step after your isometrics, work on that, of course, both sides, um, over a period of a week or two to get to the point where they've got enough strength, less pain, more healing to handle a high level isometric. Now, the Copenhagen's are in two stages, one bent knee, one straight knee. The straight knee swap for the faint harder, that's pretty hardcore stuff. So the bent knee one would be when you're sort of healing up quite a bit, you've lost a lot of pain, you're returning to start to return to training or trying to start jogging and you need that extra bit of strengthening. The long lever one is when you're in full on sport and you're trying to do injury, injury prevention. So you're trying to really get some serious strengthening going with the long lever. Let's start the short lever. I would just use simple chair at home. Note though, the chair, or the reason I use a chair height and depends on how big you are, is you, when you do this, you want to be level across. So I'll show you what I mean. In this position, I want to put the chair that way so I can put my foot in there to that position there. So when I come up into here, I'm going to be level all the way through. So it's almost like a side plank. You're going to feel this like a side plank. Once you've got that position, this is comfy here, my foot's all supported. Then what I've got to try and do, keep the hips forward, Okay, so use a bit of glute and then lift. At that point there, you can see I'm going to start shaking a little bit. It's an isometric hold, it's hard. And you're going to feel this on this one here. You're also going to feel the hip flexor through in the front here as well, because that's, you're trying to hold this leg up. You just got to make sure you don't dip, you don't sit. Okay, so it's forward, up, and then trying to be absolute level. Sometimes it's handy having a mirror in the front there to see whether you're straight, you're not sagging, you're not too far up. You're trying to hold it level and work on that isometric work there. Okay, start off with your 10 seconds. Don't be a hero, 20 seconds, then the 30, okay? So that's your short lever. Now, obviously once you've done a week, maybe two of that, you're back running, back training, and you can handle that, the pain's going away, then you could advance it up into the long lever. But like I said, long lever meaning, and so that's a short lever, long lever, okay, you're going to start working a lot all the way down into here, you're going to get a lot of these long adductors hooking into the inside part of your knee, and that's awesome for sport related stuff when you're doing long range kicks and you're using your leg in a long position, but it is difficult, so you've got to make sure that you're ready for this. So what I would do is when you come up in this one, make sure you get in the position first, and then you're looking at taking this one slowly off. Okay, you side planked here, forward here, Put weight down and then lift. And keep that position and then put it down and sit again. So you, to start off, you just got to go really easy. Don't try and be a hero and do 60 seconds. It's not like a plank where you'll fatigue and it's okay. You fatigue on this, you'll probably strain it. So five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, build yourself up over time so you can comfortably, every time, get in that position, get yourself sorted, lift, hold, and then keep that position, okay? So that's your progression for our adductor work. Um, following that, of course, sport-specific drills, you should be running by that point, and then the kicking stuff starts happening. If you're a soccer player and you're trying to work on the strength of here, you need to take that stuff and then relay it into doing sport-specific work and try to train that endurance, that conditioning into that movement. See you next time.